Danke schön. I will talk in English because uh, Ruben also talks in English and the uh, trailer will be in English. This uh, was the original language of the film. And uh, as you can imagine, um, eat and poop is a logical thing. Uh, you, first you eat, then you poop, but there's another connection we will talk about later. Uh, now it's, uh, first of all, I want to give you an, an image about the last films I did on how to feed the world. And what's the problem that we have almost a billion people on this planet who are undernourished, who have, are hungry every day. So uh, one of the reasons is we are actually wasting one third of the world's harvest. And in, this, in, in the industrial countries, it is really wasting. In the third world, it's rather loss because the, the consumers are not wasting. It's rather the loss of, because the, the infrastructure between the fields and the cities are so poor and there's no cooling and, and storage facilities. But the effect is the same. A third of the harvest is getting lost, is being wasted, which is awful. I will come back to that later. Uh, here you can see what happens in Europe. It's, I mean, many people don't even have an idea But this lady from Vienna, she was uh, uh, digging in the bins and she found like an average of 10 to 15 percent of the weight of a household bin is containing edible food. And this is just the average. So uh, ask yourself, how is it in your kitchen? Sometimes you forget things in the fridge, whatever. These are the reasons. Um, And combined with this question, we, are, we just uh, uh, reached 8 billion people on this planet. And in about 25 years, we will have 10 billion. And the problem is that the agricultural surface is, we cannot expand it anymore. I mean, you just, we, we, we need... There's no more rainforests we can chop <laughs> or just a little bit remaining. So uh, the thing is that the, 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 the per capita surface of fields or, or agricultural land is shrinking every year. The good news is that after 2050, the, the world population is not growing anymore. Most probably this will be the peak Uh, but this is still a, a challenge, so we have a challenge, less, uh, less surface and more people. I did a film on that like seven years ago, it's called 10 billion, what's on your plate? And it was purely about solutions, but solutions that are really very different. Uh, here you see uh, an organic farmer who is concerned about the soil and he, when he speaks about fertility, he speaks about the soil he is working on. And on the other side you see we went to, to a genetical engineering facility of Bayer, Bayer in Belgium. Actually it's a German uh, corporation but they, they did uh, their genetical research. They, They put it to other countries because they were fearing inside Germany it might be uh, causing problems. Anyway, they are, the idea behind that is to raise the, uh, the yield of a single plant. So if you have a plant that is producing more grains or whatever, you have a bigger harvest. That's their idea. So it's a totally different solution. One is concerned about the whole ecosystem. Another one is just, yeah, let's have one plant. And the, the disadvantage of this solution is that it needs other help. So this uh, high yield crops need pesticides, need fertilizer. We're coming to this question with the fertilizers later. It's a very important question. This is, it's the survival of mankind is depending on that. Uh, I'm sorry, um, this one is like broken. I don't know why, but... Um, It's a graph that shows the problem of the, world, uh, the world's harvest. And we have, we're wasting a third of the harvest 
but there's other waste being done as well. So the, the biofuels is the smallest one. The green one is we're feeding more and more grains to animals. This is also something that is putting the remaining part uh, under pressure. The re remaining part is what we eat directly from the fields, what we eat directly as plants. So, um, sorry for this graph, but <laughs> sometimes shit happens. <laughs> um, so, just to, to get a, uh, one more time into the, into the, psych, into the, the ph philosophy of uh, uh, it's, the, the, di the different solutions. One is really on, a, on, the, on the very extreme part. We went to Japan to film with a plant factory and they are really, um, for them it's really clear we, it's better to, to work without soil. To have like liquids with uh, the nutrients. In this case, you have you need like uh, totally st sterile conditions in in in, in high-rise buildings, but there you can even work without any pesticides. Uh, it's uh, it's not organic, as you can imagine, because all the the, the light is coming from uh, is artificial. The the nutrients are artificial, but it's uh, it's uh, it's something coming up in a in a lot of countries right now, uh, city farms. And then you have another type of traditional, conventional agriculture, which is, yeah, which is working with soil with the advantage of having, I mean, agriculture can be, is maybe the only form of economy that can be climate positive that can bury more CO2 into the soil than it actually emits. It can, because it depends on the kind of agriculture you're doing. So, uh, and uh, then there is also an interesting thing just coming up, science does not know a lot about it, which is the bacteria in the soil and the bacteria in our bodies, they correspond somehow. We, each of us is, is carrying like three kilos of bacteria. We don't recognize, but they're important for our, the good bacteria. They're important for our health. So uh, this is maybe something we have to explore more. Science is just beginning to start to investigate about that. So, and then I'm coming to agriculture and climate, and which is kind of important because I'm not speaking about the diesel we put into the tractors. I'm speaking about what the, the biggest footprint, the environmental footprint of agriculture is, rather um, the, 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 the nitrogen fertilizer they're using. It's artificially made. I mean, nitrogen is, is available in, in the atmosphere, like 20% of the, of the air we're breathing is, is, is nitrogen. There is enough, unfortunately, to make fertilizers out of it. We, we need a lot of, of fossil gas, a lot of fossil fuels. And this is causing a lot of climate damage. This is the main thing. So I'm coming back to this graph. It's not only agriculture. When we look on the climate consequences, we also need to add land use because land use is only being made or mainly being made by agriculture. When you chop wood or when you when you uh, change a, a green land, it's only agriculture. And then you need to add a little bit of waste in energy and industry. And then you come up like almost 40% of our climate uh, warming is being caused by our food. It's a lot, globally seen. It's a lot. The good news is we can save 80% of it by mainly by wasting less and by doing agriculture differently without, uh, without agri uh, synthetic fertilizers. This is the main thing. So um, when, I, when I was clear about that, we, we were just filming in, in India and this is maybe the key of everything. They are the farmers. They, they certainly work on a low technologi technological level, but they were so proud to show us that they saved their old 
seeds, the seeds that are uh, being adapted to the climate there. We've seen in the same village where they, where they also, some of the farmers were growing uh, uh, high yield corporate seeds. And there was a, a flood, a flood destroying the harvest. The rice was 100% killed by the, by the flood. Their rolled seeds were still green. Three, three days or four days of water don't harm these rice plants. They are adapted to this. So this is important. And they also had a, a very nice way of, of producing their manure, mainly from cows. But we now have another way, uh, which we, have to, we need to, to look back. And they, they, knew, they knew about it because they still do it. They still use human feces for, uh, uh, for, for producing fertilizers. Maybe not in the, in the conditions we wish, but this is the topic of our film I want to present to you. And we have a trailer that is showing you how it works. You will see this trailer, as uh, our moderator said, from today on, on holyshit.global. So I roll the film. We need sound. Well, I go back because no, no film, no sound, no film. <laughs> When I look at compost and my future, I see Africa with enough food. I see Africa as the food store. I see Africa as the food basket. We are using it on green pepper, bananas, some perennial crops like coffee, and from a renewable raw material, feces. We've had some legislation change that allows me to collect it. We've had some legislation change that allows me to treat it. And now um, I'm still live right now in the battle to get them to accept this is no longer waste. Es ist schon beachtlich, dass das vor nur wenigen Wochen menschliche Scheiße war und ähm, jetzt eigentlich ein bedenkenloser Recyclingdünger ist. Those who have had these systems installed are fine with it. They like it. They would not want to go back to flush toilet. Und dann wird das eingesaugt, ähm, wo das saubere Wasser dann weiterläuft und das ähm, Pipi und Kaka wird zu Dünger und zu der ähm, und zu Strom gemacht. 그리고 한번 이 사용을 하시면 하루에 한번 십굴이라는 똥분의 화폐를 지급하게 되는데요. 제가 한번 Devenir une vieille dame dans un endroit où on s'occupe de sa merde. Moi je trouve ça génial. This proves it's possible to make shit into soil. There it is. Thank you. Welcome and thank you. <clears throat> um, can shit save the world? Can poop save the world? Probably. That's the title of our film, Holy Shit. And we have a, a saying that shit is the new gold. So because we're talking about cash and money, this is very apropos to, to this presentation. And for 4,000 years, before some of our languages that we speak today were even born, we were already 
using our shit, we would grow our food, eat it, shit it or excrete it, bring it back to the soil and grow food again. And that cycle, that intact cycle was the basis of agricultural or agriculture worldwide for 4,000 years. In Asia mostly, but also in the Americas, in the pre-Columbian cultures. It was so valuable, shit was so valuable in those days, in, 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 that, in those millennia, that in, in Asia, in the 18th century, if they caught you stealing shit, they would put you in jail. That's how valuable it was. And I, I show this picture here, this is not from the 18th century, obviously, but these are containers of shit that they're called night soil because what they would do, they would collect the shit in containers and put them on the side of the, of the road or the sidewalk. And at night, there were workers who would come in and pick up the shit and bring it back to the soils in the fields to grow food. And so this is a, a picture that shows that. <clears throat> so what happens? In the, uh, with the Industrial Revolution in the mid-1800s, we break that cycle. So we grow, we eat, and instead of using our shit, we're dumping it into waterways. We're dumping it into lakes, into rivers, into oceans, and we're not using that shit to grow food. So something has to replace that, that shit, that fertilizer that we were using in order to grow food. And that's when chemical fertilizers are born. You know, that's the, that's the origin of chemical fertilizers is when industry realizes that, okay, we're wasting it, we're treating it now as pollution, we're treating it as waste. And that's one of the key things about the film that we want to send the message that shit is not waste. Shit is a resource. There's a lot of people who have a problem hearing the word shit. Probably when you hear it from me, there's like a little bit of a, a twitch, shit. But we got to get used to it because that's going to be the future. Without our shit, we're not going to be able to grow food, as Valentin had already hinted. So chemical fertilizers take over, and we have broken the, the, the cycle. To make chemical fertilizers, we need huge amounts of fossil fuels to make them because even though nitrogen is present in the air, you need to fix nitrogen to make it part of a, of a fertilizer, and that requires enormous amounts of energy. You also need energy to um, mine the, 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 um, the phosphorus and the potassium, which are the other two ingredients of chemical fertili or fertilizers in general, no? Nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And to mine those resources, it's really polluting. It also requires a lot of fossil fuels, and it creates a lot of radioactive waste. And so the world is slowly having a harder time using mined fertilizer because of all these costs that I said. And if you think about climate change, and we want to reduce the amount of, of fossil fuels that, we, that we're using, here is a, a good place to start. No, here we, is a really good place to start. So as I said, the three main elements in fertilizers are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the so-called NPK, which are the symbols, the chemical symbols of the fertilizers. And those are the ones that we're mining from mines in Morocco. The, the case of potassium is really delicate now because with the war in Ukraine, the second largest reserve of potassium is in Belarus, and the third one is in, the, in, in Russia. So we're really jeopardizing our food security when these two critical elements are being restricted because of this war, and who knows what will happen. The third one is in Western Sahara, which is also an occupied region in the world. So we're dealing with a very sensitive uh, situation that we must address. And the, the great thing is that our pee and poop contains the same three elements. 
we pee nitrogen and we pull potassium and phosphorus. We also pee it. All of them come together mostly in the urine side, but also in the fecal side. So, I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? I mean, we, we, we need these three, these three fertilizers, and every time we sit at the toilet, we're producing it, except that we're wasting them because we think they're waste, and we don't treat them as a resource. These are two examples. This is, uh, these are pellets that are made from um, shit fertilizer in, in um, Uganda, where we shot part of the film. So they take the, the shit, they compost it, then they pulverize it, and then they make these um, pellets that can be applied into the soil like a regular fertilizer. Aurin, maybe some of you have seen Aurin here in the Lutopia um, section of the exhibit here. Aurin was developed in Switzerland as, a, as, urine, as fertilizer derived from human urine with no pesticides, no uh, heavy metals, and highly concentrated. Basically, you, you use 10 milliliters of Aurin for one liter of water. So it's, it's pretty good. I have used it in my garden, and it really works well. I have used my pee, too. So right now, we can't, you know, most people think, oh, you know, but you're using shit. This is going to get us sick. You're using urine. This is going to get us sick. And we, we can hygienically use our excreta to, to, as fertilizer to grow food, to reduce fossil fuel use, to mitigate climate change, prevent dead zones in the oceans, because when we dump all these minerals into the oceans, we are killing the marine life. And we can also generate energy. This is one toilet that can already do that. This separates the pee from the feces. And this is the professor that I interviewed in Korea who designed this, this toilet that separates the urine from the feces, makes fertilizer out of the urine, makes uh, energy out of both, and it purifies the water. So with these three elements that he's doing, purifying the water, using it for fertilizer and producing energy, he created a currency called the feces standard money. And ghoul is the digital currency that many people know as shitcoin. So I thought this was really apropos with the cash topic that we have here in, um, in Republica 23. With the FSM app, you can basically, you saw that in the trailer that you, you take a shit and you scan the, sca the QR code and you have an app that collects the, the good shine, the, the value of, of your feces. And then you can go into a website and buy concert tickets, therapy sessions, auto mechanic work. And so here's a man who has seen uh, the idea that poop really is money. You know? And in the film, we have other, sh other uh, options that we show, like uh, co uh, uh, a vacuum toilet in, in Hamburg, compost toilets in Uganda compost toilets in England, flush water toilet that works ecologically in Geneva, and a dry toilet in, in uh, Sweden. So that's why we said that shit is the new gold. And yes, poop can save the world for sure. Thank you. One, one, brief, one brief announcement while, while we get ready for the next stage is that our film is going to premiere in October here in Germany. And um, we really want your support to, to go to the cinemas, bring your family, bring your friends, and, and support this film because this is really an in, uh, a very important topic and it will affect the way Switzerland and Austria will will play this film in their respective countries. If it is successful here in Germany, it will also be seen in the other countries and saying, we got to look at that film. I'll pass on the microphone now to Valentin Thorn. Thanks, Ruben. <laughs> Thank you.
And now I just, uh, I, I'm switching to German because the next song you will hear, yes, it will be a singer on stage, will be in German language. Um, wir haben eine Uraufführung, zum ersten Mal den Holy Shit Song. Uh, und heißen Sie mit mir willkommen, die wunderbare Iris Lamoyette. Hier ist meine Boy Group, <lacht> Background Singer. Ja, Spannung. Okay. Also das befasst sich eigentlich im Großen und Ganzen damit, was läuft schief beim großen Geschäft. Heute spreche ich mal über ein Thema, das ist sicher nichts für manche Fremdschema, dabei eine Lösung für Ressourcen und das Klima, für die EU, die USA bis hin nach China. Jeder macht es, keiner sagt es, jeder spült es weg, dabei ist es kein Dreck. Wir können es als guten Kompass nehmen, dafür braucht sich wirklich niemand hier zu schämen. Heilige Sch oder Holy Shit, wir können es benutzen, baby, that is it. Es ist viel mehr als einfach nur Dreck, als Kompass ist es wertvoll. Im WC spült sinnlos weg. Die Erde wird nicht jünger, Mensch, wir brauchen unseren Dünger. Deutschland braucht pro Jahr für den Gang zum Moment. Deutschland braucht pro Jahr für den Gang zum WC. So viel Wasser wie der Müritzsee. Bitte versteh, das ist Deutschlands weitgrößter See. So eine Verschwendung, das tut doch einfach weh. Denn das heißt, Deutschland fährt leist für die Kläranlage eine Milliarde Liter an Wasser und an Strom ein Steinkohlekraftwerk nicht wenig krasser. Heilige Sch oder Holy Shit, wir können es benutzen, baby, that is it. Es ist viel mehr als einfach nur Dreck. Als Kompass ist es wertvoll, im WC spült sinnlos weg. Ja, die Erde ist nicht jünger, Mensch, wir brauchen unseren Dünger. Du sagst, ich denke, Medikamente und Bakterien haben Rückstände und das dann auch unsere Äcker. Stinkig, eklig, wenig, lecker, nichts für mich. Ich bin fein Schmecker. Ich sag... Fest und flüssig wird getrennt und so des Geruchs enthemmt. Das lagert man bis zu einem Jahr, vernichtet die Bakterien Schar. Dann wird's auf 70 Grad erhitzt, alles giftige komplett verschwitzt. Nehmen wir uns ein Jahr Zeit, stellen sie im Ernährungskreislauf bereit. Haben wir einen Dünger, der gut gedeiht. Und hast es jetzt kapiert? Und bist nicht mehr geniert? Und denn was läuft schief beim großen Geschäft? Ungefähr alles, wenn man alles bei allem belässt. Wir haben das Können und wir haben das Wissen. Machen wir jetzt hin, sonst haben wir es verschissen. Die EU hat im Kopf vollen Knoten, denn die Politik hat kluges Handeln hier verboten. Heilig oder holy shit, wir können es benutzen, baby, that is it. Es ist viel mehr als einfach nur Dreck, als Kompost ist es wertvoll. Im WC spült sinnlos weg. Die Erde wird nicht jünger, Mensch, wir brauchen unseren Heilig oder Holy Shit. Wir können es benutzen, baby, that is it. Es ist viel mehr als einfach nur Dreck. Als Kompass ist es wertvoll. Im WC spült sinnlos. Danke euch.